So that meat was our pink meat, and so we had pink hair, so I have a little bit in my hair. <laughs> you still have a little bit. It's like <laughs> pretty salmon orange color now. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that was for breast cancer. And you announced at the meet that you suffered from breast ca cancer last year. And so we're going to talk a bit about that. And I remember driving to the airport for summer 2014 and receiving an email. And you told us that you had cancer. And we had no idea at all. So yeah, that really was shocking. And the summer was so strong and inspirational all the time. So. Just to think that someone like you can get cancer just like puts it in perspective that really it does affect everyone. Mm -hmm. So when did you actually find out? I found out about, gosh, three or four days before I emailed all of you. And I didn't email you. I didn't tell you before you left because you were in finals. And so I wanted to wait for everybody to get through with finals before I talked to the team. And I couldn't do that because some of you had already left. I know that you had left before the rest, some of the rest of the team had gotten through with finals. So that was a bit awkward. But um, everything happened very quickly. I, I started the month before I was at San Diego choreographing for SeaWorld, like I do every summer. And it was, I don't know, the end of May. And I had pain in my left breast. And I thought, I should do that monthly exam that we're all told to do, that I never do. And they always say, you know, you may find something that feels like a P, or a hard P. And I had pain in my left breast, but I went to the right breast, and on the side of my breast, I felt what felt like a pulled muscle. It didn't feel round. It felt, honestly, like it was about that long, which it wasn't. It was very small, but, um, and I thought, well, let's go home and get it checked out. And I really didn't think it was anything. It didn't hurt. I don't have breast cancer in my family. Nobody has had breast cancer. And uh, I went in and got it checked out. And she said, yeah, there's something there. Let's, and it was very quickly. Let's get a mammogram. Yeah, there's something there. Oh, let's, why don't you stay and we'll do an ultrasound. Great. Yeah, there's something there. How about if we schedule tomorrow? We're going to schedule a biopsy. OK. And it was just bam, bam, bam. Did it feel like something serious was happening to you as they progressed you on to having all these different tests? I think I do really well under pressure. I don't, I don't go to the negative, I go to the positive. I never think, oh my gosh, what if it's this? I always go, it's probably not that, but I'm gonna get it checked out. Yeah. And uh, three days after the biopsy, I think, I got the phone call and my doctor said, I, I don't like doing these things over the phone, but I want you to know as soon as possible you do have breast cancer, it is malignant, it's a malignant tumor. And I pulled off the side of the road, <clears throat> and my mother had cancer 30 years, are you crying, Noosh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mother was diagnosed with colon cancer about 30 years ago. And at that time, you didn't talk about it, you didn't ask questions, you didn't, it was just a really weird vibe, because I cared so much about her, but I didn't know if I could say anything. And that's what I flashed back to my mother's experience. And she did die. She passed away about three years later. Um, but I heard really clearly, you know, you, I have a very strong faith. I heard very, very clearly God say, be anxious for nothing and appreciative for all things. And I figured this isn't a suggestion, it's a commandment. Yeah. And I can honestly tell you that from that moment, I did not worry and I was not fearful one moment for the rest of that year that I went through chemo and everything. I just wow. lived by that mantra. And I would wake up every morning, and first thing I would do is I look up and I'd go, oh, okay, I get another day. And then I would start just enumerating my blessings. I'm so appreciative that I live in a country that as a woman, I get to work. Yeah. I get to work with women in sport. I have my freedoms as a woman. I think about that throughout the day, almost every day. And then I would start in. I get to work with people like you. I get to have food. I get to have clothing. I get look at my wonderful marriage. Look, and when you're counting your blessings all day long, you're not thinking about, oh gosh, what if? So yeah. I chose to stay positive all day, every day. And it was an amazing experience. Yeah. You definitely did stay positive. Every single time we saw you, there wasn't any moments where you made yourself a victim of cancer. But was there not, there wasn't one single moment where you were just like, why me? No, 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 no. There was, 
it was that on the on the opposite side. Um, a few days after I got the diagnosis and they got the biopsy and all that, I went in to see my doctor and I will never forget, she's looking at me with a big smile on her face and she said, you do have cancer, but it's stage one and we know the exact formula for the chemotherapy that will work. So if you choose chemotherapy, you'll be in chemo for about a year and you're gonna go through some surgeries, but you're gonna be fine. And I absolutely believed her. And when you said the why me, it was, wow, I am so lucky. Why me? When so many other people get more dire information from their doctors. Yeah. You know, I got that why me. And then um, I learned that there was a study that I could participate in. And I'm huge on doing anything we can for any disease, cancers, any disease to, to help find cures. And I was like, of course, I, I'll partake in this. And they said, well, one part of the study is you're going to go through traditional chemotherapy. You'll, you might be a little sick. You'll probably lose all your hair. And, um, but you'll, it will work on yeah. killing the cancer. The, the study part of it is uh, targeted chemotherapy. So the, the chemo goes right to the cancer cell. It doesn't go through your body. Yeah. So you won't get sick. You won't get fatigued. You won't lose your hair. And I said, I want, I want that one. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, well, it's a study, so yeah. there's a random draw. <laughs> and I was like, but I'm the head coach of the UCI Gymnastics team. And she's like, I said, I know the CEO of the UCI Hospital. She says, you can know the President of the United States. It's not gonna, I said, well, how much does it cost? She says, no, it's a study. It is a pure random draw. Oh, wow. So I was totally prepared to go through losing my hair. Should I get a wig? Should I do the scarves? You know, what right. would make, I, I just remembering what would make you guys more comfortable especially yeah. if I'm going to go through meets with you and all that. Because I really didn't want to be the center of the attention yeah. through all this. The day before I started chemotherapy, the day before, she said, I've got great news for you. You've been randomly drawn for this study. And it was the only time through this whole thing that I cried. Oh, wow. Of joy. Of joy. Wow. Because I knew it was going to be a life changer. That's crazy. We well, were talking of crying. I know I cried when I heard the news, but how was it telling like Bobby or close friends and family? My husband has a really strong faith as well, and he was so sweet. He was in the doctor's office with me when I got the diagnosis. And he said, my love, I know that you're gonna be going through a really hard year, but I know you're gonna be fine. And I asked him, just as I asked you guys, and I asked Chris and Randy and Dom, please do not treat me like I'm sick. I am not sick. Sick is when you have the flu. I have a tumor in my breast and I'm really lucky I get to have this drug that's gonna kill the tumor because I looked at it like the cancer was just this little tiny part of my, my daily life. The rest of my life was amazing. So don't, let's not magnify this little tiny part. And you guys were great. You were very understanding when I needed to, in practice, when I needed to go upstairs and maybe get a cup of tea and just chill out. Yeah. But you did not treat me like I was sick, and I believe that that was a huge reason that I was able to stay so positive. Yeah, well, it was easy for us to do that because you never acted like a victim, like I said before. The only time I remember you having to put it in the forefront of our minds is when you were dehydrated that one day, and then our trainer at the time, the student trainer, Brooke, and she took you on the golf cart yes. to the hospital and she ran someone over. She ran someone over on campus. <laughs> <laughs> she was really quiet and sweet, so she just did this hit and run and like didn't say anything. <laughs> Miss Mouse in the back, like, she just ran someone over. <laughs> I did. I got really um, dehydrated and I was, I literally, I couldn't hold my head up. And I remember it being in that golf cart and just hearing it go, boom. <laughs> and I opened my eyes and I was like, Brooke, you ran over a person. <laughs> now, obviously, she didn't run over someone. She just kind of clipped them in the back. But to me, it felt like she had ran over someone. Yeah. But they were fine. They just looked at her like she was crazy. <laughs> Brooke. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Uh, one of the reasons why I tell people last year was so incredible was because I was able to experience it all with you. And I think it's really, really important for women your age to have been able to go through something like that and realize it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be doomsday. It doesn't have to be cancer with this 
massive C. It's like yeah. cancer with a little C. And so November, I had the double mastectomy and was out, I was supposed to be out a week. I believe I was out for four days and I came back with the tubes. I had a poncho on, yeah. but you guys couldn't hug me and they were sticking out to here. And how did, how did you feel going through that? And would it have been better for me to stay at home? Um, no, I think when I saw the tube and stuff, knowing that you've had the surgery is more a sign of recovery at that point. Mm. So it was definitely like a relief that you've gotten through the surgery part because I think that's chemo is like the small part and then the surgery is, gets rid of it. So in my mind, when I saw you, I was like, wow, she, she could have rested more, but to see you up on your feet was just like a relief and I was definitely happy. And I know that you wouldn't push yourself to mm -hmm. limits that you couldn't withhold. Mm -hmm. So even though you covered it up and stuff, we knew it was there, but being able to see that it all worked out was just a relief mm -hmm. for me and I'm pretty sure most of the girls too. How did you feel when the team traveled to Arkansas and I was not able to make that trip because I was in chemo that day. My doctor just didn't want me messing up my chemo schedule. Um, well, we just decided that we would make our meet about you and do it for mm. you. So that was just- I didn't, that. I didn't know that. This is yeah. the first time hearing this. <laughs> so that was just extra motivation for us. And I, re I remember that meet really clearly and my memory is not that good. So <laughs> it was a really, really fun meet. And I, I get emotional easily, so I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> but I remember like, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is a side of Denisha that most people don't see. You see this really strong competitor out there that's always up, but she's one of the most sensitive people that I've ever coached, and it's a really nice side of you. It's a very <laughs> endearing side of you. So I remember really clearly, like in my bar routine, it was going really well. And then I just remember like hearing all the team and sometimes I can't hear anything. So, mm -hmm. And then I remember like thinking of you in that time and then I stuck it. So <laughs> that was great. And I just have a, <laughs> a really clear memory of that meet. So I think That's you great. not being there just empowered us more to do it for you. Can Thank I get you. a tissue? <laughs> okay. yeah. So back to you. Mm -hmm. um, how did you feel going into your last chemo session? Well, my last chemo session was the day that we came back from Woodward. And so uh, we needed to do a conditioning challenge that day. And it would have been nice if we could have done around 9 o'clock. But I had to start my chemotherapy at 11. And so you guys were so gracious. Um, there was not one person that balked when I said, OK, we're going to start at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, and I drove back. And I wasn't really thinking about it. And you know, I always referred to going to chemotherapy as my chemo spa. And it was a, that was really important for me to, to use that term because a spa to me is somewhere where you go to feel better. Yeah. And I was very conscientious of the fact that chemotherapy was going to make me feel better. I was really um, appreciative that I got chemo. And I remember going up the elevator to this, the chemo spa and there was a woman that I was in the elevator with and I said, so where are you going? Because we're all going the same floor. And she said, I have to get chemo. And I said, no, we get to get chemo. We, we get to get something that's going to make us healthier and better. And she just sneered at me. And that was the end of our conversation. I felt so badly that, you know, chemo doesn't make you feel good, but ultimately it's what's gonna make us be able to live more days. Yeah. So I went in for my chemo and I had not felt this at all. This was, I mean, I've been through, now chemo for a year every three weeks and it's every day time I went in it's like do 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 just go in get hooked up pull out my laptop get my work done eh. so many hours later take it out can I go home okay fine it was nothing it was no big deal yeah. I was very lucky because I was on the study and it was so weird about an hour before I knew it was done because you get your chemo done then you've got to sit there for an observation period for 30 to 45 minutes I started getting so anxious and nervous and I like almost I couldn't breathe. I wanted to be out of there and done. I'm done. I'm yeah. done. And it just started building. And I turned to my nurse and I remember I had like 20 more minutes in the observation period. I said, I have not had one reaction in the whole year I've been through this. Please get this needle out of me and let me go. And 
she was great. They they took it out and and I just it started building and I walked out of that building and I started sobbing harder than I've ever sobbed in my life. Did I ever tell you guys this? No. Sobbing, sobbing, w trying to get to my car. This woman stops me because she's so worried about me. I said, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. She's like, you're not fine. I said, no, this is a good cry. This is fine, I'm fine. And I get to my car and I go in and I put my head on my windshield, on the, the, dr sure. the steering wheel. And I just sobbed the hardest, most heart-wrenching sobs I've ever cried wow. in my life. And then uh, got myself to dinner together, went to dinner with my husband. He's like, how you doing, my love? Sobbed. Oh. <laughs> then got through dinner, went home that night, got in the shower, sobbed. <laughs> like, like, I can't breathe sobbing. Wow. And then I was done. I was over it. Okay, the year is done. Let's move on. Wow. That's inspiring, definitely. Yeah. So that year, we did a lot of legacy routines for the floor routines. So do you want to talk us through why we did that? I didn't have the energy to do routines. And um, Randy came up with a great idea that actually, I think it may have been Scott Bellows and Randy. I just did not know how I was going to do 15, 16 routines. And they said this is a perfect year to bring back the best of the best. Yeah. And I think I had done yours maybe. I yeah. had music for Angie. There were, I did three or four of them. But it was so much fun having the girls get so excited about being able to do. I get to do Lena Dictava's yeah. routine. And I get, I get to do Ariana's routine. They didn't look at it like I don't get to have my own routine. Right. So stuff came out of that that I didn't really anticipate, and it was yeah. wonderful. And people around the country just said, oh, my gosh, this is wonderful that you're bringing back these routines that we remember so well. Yeah. So That was a fun day when everyone had their YouTubes up and they were all doing their routines. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't got mine yet, so I was practicing. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they you're were like, having fun. I'm just going to shoot people. It's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. You didn't come out public last year with your cancer, so what made you decide to come out now? I didn't come out last year for two reasons. One, I knew that I was going to go through a year of chemo and surgeries, and I really didn't want to be the center of all that attention with you guys. The, it's always about you and the team. And honestly, my dad is old. He was 92. He's 93 this year. He has shingles on and off, which is brought on by stress. And I just didn't feel that he needed to know. He still doesn't know. He doesn't need to know. He still has shingles. And I remember someone called him when the Ariana Berlin movie, Full Out, came out. And they told him that I was being represented in this movie by Jennifer Beals. And blah, blah, blah. So he called me and I said, how did you know that? He said, well, someone in the Greek community called him and told him. And I thought, that's how he's going to find out I had cancer. So I didn't come out to anybody except you guys. And I just felt, okay, I'm done. I need to be able to share my stories in case it might empower just one person yeah. to look at, not to look at it with fear, but to look at it with hope. Yeah. Either when you are diagnosed, when you know someone diagnosed, don't go to fear right away. Stay on hope. Right. And I thought that was an important message that I wanted to share. And if I can just ask people not, if you know my dad, don't tell him. It's just he doesn't need to know. He's very, very, very old and he's got shingles. Yeah. That's very selfless. And I think... I'm probably still going to cry every time someone tells me that they have cancer or especially if it's a child. But if people can start looking at it or myself, I can start looking at it in the way that you did. I definitely think that that's very inspiring and something I'm going to try and do and I invite you guys to try that too. Thanks, Noosh.